If you've got your Bibles, let's turn to John chapter 8, verse 12. And Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. In other words, Jesus is making a declaration. He wants his audience to not miss what he's saying. And they really don't miss it. Because we've got to look at where Jesus is at the time of him saying this. He's at the Feast of Tabernacles, which is also called a Feast of Booze. It's, it's when the Israelites used to remember the time that God took them through that 40-year journey through the wilderness. And they would build these booths to remember that time of God's faithfulness, of God's direction. It would be an annual celebration. You know, remember in that wilderness, God put a cloud in the daytime to lead the people and a pillar of fire at night. And and so during this celebration, they would build huge fires. They were called menorahs and they would be 75 foot high and they would light up the whole of Jerusalem, more so than Blackpool Illuminations. <laughs> and it would remind the people of the past hope, the past remembrance of God's promise. And also it would remind them of the future hope of God's promise, that he would send a saviour, he would send a messiah, he would send an everlasting light into the world. They remember being guided by the light of God in the wilderness, but they also had a hope to look forward that one day God was going to send into the world an everlasting, never going out light, and that would be the saviour. So it's on this day, the last day of this celebration, when actually these huge fires are now burning out. The embers are smouldering and they're dying. And Jesus steps in front of these, I would imagine. And he then declares, I am the light of the world. You know, he's being bold here. Maybe he's being really audacious because he is looking at the dead, dying embers of the dying light that was temporary, that was man-made, that was just to celebrate something that had happened in the past. And they were looking forward to this light of the world coming. And yet there he was, stood in front of them saying, I am the light of the world. They were loaded words. So long had they been waiting for the light of the world. But they were waiting for an eternal, everlasting light. The light they had built did not last. The light they had built faded. The light that they had built died. You know, in Genesis 1-3, it said, God, let, God said, let there be light, and there was light. But God said this and made the light before the sun was ever created. Because it was speaking of the light of the world, the eternal light that would come in Jesus Christ. And also in Isaiah 60, it says, The sun will no longer supply light for you by day, nor will the moon brightness shine on you at night. But the Lord your God will be the permanent source of light on you. In other words, the Israelites that were listening to Jesus say these words that day knew full well that the light they were waiting for was a light that was far beyond earth, far beyond the sun, far beyond the moon. That was a light that was there before the creation of time and a light that will be with us when time has finished. And Jesus boldly is declaring that he is the eternal light of life. He was going to be there. He was there in the beginning. And he continues forever, even when the sun is no more. You know, by using this phrase, the light of life, his hearers totally get what he's saying. They understand that Jesus in front of them is actually claiming to be God. They knew that only God alone could be an eternal light. But even to press his point further, Jesus uses I am. This is the very name that God uses to describe himself when he met Moses at the burning bush. Now, every Jew listening fully knows that Jesus is boldly claiming to be God. Only God is an eternal light that never fades. Only God is known as I am. But the Pharisees, which are the religious leaders of that day, they argue against this fiercely. But Jesus, right now, he's not meek, mild, polite Jesus. He is confident in who he is. And it must have been quite disarming. He's almost saying, I am your eternal source of light, not just for a festival, not just for a crowd, but forever, for everyone, everywhere. I am the light of the world. I am the eternal, everlasting light that gives life. You know, as we look back in that time when they were going through the wilderness and the time when Moses would go up the mountain and come down and his face would have shone with the reflective glory of God. 
Yet right now, Jesus was in front of them. He was God come down and he was amongst them. He was before them, confronting them, not with a reflective glory from being in the presence of God, but with an emanating, internal, manifesting glory at the very personhood. He was God himself. There was no denying it. Hebrews 1.3 says, The sun is the radiance of God's glory, and he is the exact representation of his being, sustaining all things by the power of his word. The evidence is overwhelming. All the boxes are ticked. The Messiah is here. They just spent a week celebrating what God had done in the past, yet they missed his very present presence. I wonder how many times we miss sensing the presence of Jesus right now, right here in our daily busy lives. You know, this light that Jesus offers is a light that gives us direction. Have you ever heard someone say, I'm in the dark when they haven't got a clue about something? Or that sheds some light on it when they see the light. Light reveals you know, whether it's a mental understanding that gives us clarity or an actual visual seeing, light illuminates. It enables us to see what we didn't see before. Many years ago, when I worked in travel, I had to go to a, a place called Ibiza. And the plane that I was on got delayed. In fact, it was so late that when I arrived at the hotel, it was all closed up. The reception was closed, the front door was closed, it was pitch black and I couldn't see. I turned around and the taxi had gone, had left me. It was early hours of the morning. I couldn't even see any light from the moon. It was pitch black. I was tired. I couldn't see where I was. I couldn't see in front of my feet. So I felt around for a sun lounger and I was so tired, I, I lay down on that sun lounger and I went into a deep sleep. I was so exhausted from my journey. But in the morning... When the sun rose, when the sunlight uh, showed where I was, I realized that this sun lounger that I'd been sleeping on all night was teetering on the edge of a very deep pool. If I'd have rolled over in my sleep, I dread to think what would have happened. I definitely could have done with, your word is a lamp for my feet, a light for my path. You see, we all need light, especially when things are dark, especially when we can't see where we're going. Light gives direction, whether it comes from the sun or the electric lights or even the camera lights here. We need light. And 1 John 1 5 says, God is light and in him there is no darkness. Darkness is the opposite of light. It hides, it blinds, it gives us a sense of fear, of evil, of aboding. We often associate darkness with difficult, painful seasons. We say things like dark times dark moods, dark comedy, to describe a heaviness. But Jesus says, whoever follows me will never walk in darkness. What a claim. Jesus here is claiming to be the light that leads us through turbulent testing times. He promises to be our direction through darkness, our direction through difficulties. And just like when God provided the pillar of light that led Israel through the desert, when they didn't know which way to turn, God would be our light. Jesus will be our light. He will tell us which way, which direction to turn. You know, maybe some of you are in a wilderness right now. Maybe some of you are feeling in a dark place right now and you're not sure which direction to turn. And Jesus is saying today, if we choose to follow his light, to follow him, his light will illuminate our path through the dark seasons of our life. His light will be a guiding light of direction when we don't know which way to go. A light that protects us, a light that guides us, a light that strengthens us, a light that helps us to see so that we don't stumble, so that we don't fall, or put ourselves into a dangerous place like I was in Ibiza. We all face things we haven't faced before. And none of us have walked through this pandemic before. In Isaiah 42, it says this, I will lead them in a way they don't know, in paths they haven't known. I will guide them. I will turn the darkness before them into light and through the rough places into level ground. These are the things I do, and I do not forsake them. Even in dark times, we can rise up, we can stand out, and we can be an amazing reflective glory of God to a world that is in darkness. You know, 
an orange is an orange in the light. But in the darkness, if I was to put this orange in a dark room where there was no light coming through, there wouldn't be any light getting to it. It would become dark. It would be unseen. Without the source of light, there is no colour. Without the light, it becomes rotten. It withers. And it cannot even be what God intended it to be. In the darkness, this orange cannot be orange. And without his light, we become dark. We lose our shine. <laughs> I remember teaching the children in, in kids' church, this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine for Jesus. Without the light of Jesus, we cannot become what God intends us to become. God intends to light up our lives so that we will be a reflection of his light to others in this dark world, even in this dark pandemic. In Matthew 5.16, it says, In the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. So Jesus, right here in this scripture, is inviting us to make a decision. For some of us, these are difficult days that we are navigating through. Recently, after listening to those shockingly high COVID numbers, I just became overwhelmed with pain for the grieving families. And then as I started to think about grieving families, my heart broke for the many conversations I've had recently about people struggling with isolation. And then I started to think about the pressure of the NHS and the nurses that I talked to and the frontline workers. And, and then so many needs were flooded my mind and I really got overwhelmed. And then I started to think about the future of, of this world that we know. Will it ever be the same? And a sadness started to creep into my mind. And then I went to the future of my own grandchildren. And my grandchildren, that stopped me in my, in my tracks as my heart really started to ache. Missing them, holding them, smelling them. I so wanted to be back in those days where we could go and visit people. I started to think about my amazing adult children that I haven't seen for so long. My mother who is ill and isolating and I cannot see her. And my friends who I can't coffee with and go for lunch with. And it... I'm not sure. I'm not sharing this to gain your comfort. Because I know many, many of you are feeling pandemic pain to one degree or another. But I thought I'd managed to keep balance through this season. And yet this sudden pain seemed to open the gates of grief and frustration. And at one particular moment, I even almost said, where are you, God? Where is the light of Jesus in, in all of this darkness? And it was then that I reached for my Bible. I didn't feel like praying. I didn't feel like reading. So I started to read Psalms out loud. And slowly as I started to read the Psalms out loud, they turned into prayers. And slowly as I cried, the prayers turned into singing. Something changed. My mood lifted. Fear turned to faith. Despair turned to hope. Frustration became peace. Pain became shared. And that brought healing. I felt the presence of God. A security, a joy that God was in this with me. I was not alone. I didn't fully understand it, but I didn't need to at that moment. The light of the Lord had come into my life at that moment in a dark place. I was not alone. And you, my friend, you are not alone. At that moment, my countenance changed, my energy returned and light came in. The darkness dispelled. You know, James 4, 7 says, resist the devil and he must flee. Darkness cannot be dark when the light has come. You know, when we switch on a light at home, the darkness is dispelled straight away. And as we start to open our Bibles, as we start to pray, as we start to sing, even in that dark, hard time, as soon as we start to do that, it's like flicking the switch of the light comes on and the darkness has to flee. You know, I don't usually read the King James Version, but I love it in Psalm 112 when it says this, Unto the upright there ariseth light in the darkness. He is a gracious and full of compassion and righteousness. And that's how it felt for me, that the light rose up inside of me. The situation hadn't changed, outside hadn't changed, external circumstances had not changed. But something inside of me changed. 
the light of the King of glory came in. He came into my pain. He came into my frustration. He came into my fear. He came into my depression. Job says this when he was depressed. He has caused his lamp to shine upon my head. And by his light, I walk through the darkness. The darkness didn't go quite for Job. But because of the light, it enabled him to walk through the darkness. Light is a metaphor of the presence and the power of Almighty God. And Jesus says to us today, I am that light. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, even though it's dark. But I will have the light of life. We need a light on the inside of us that will dispel the darkness that is outside of us. That will dispel the depression and the confusion. A light that does not require an external circumstance to power it. A light to illuminate when we can't see the way forward, to sustain us, to give us hope when it's fading. To hold us when our hearts are breaking, to steady us when life is uncomfortable, when life is unpredictable, and when life is unsafe. And Jesus knows this world can be a dark place. He knows disappointment. He knows disaster. He knows pain. He knows betrayal. He knows death. The light of Jesus gives us strength to find light in darkness. You know, the Queen's Christmas message this year, she said this. Every year, we herald the coming of Christmas by turning on lights. Light is more than creating a festive mood. Light brings hope. For Christians, Jesus is the light of the world. And that is that hope. And then she went on to say this. The teachings of Christ has served as my inner light. I wonder today, if you need this inner light... A light that dispels darkness. A light that brings hope. A light that brings peace. A light that brings clarity. A light that brings direction when you're confused. You know, life, even in dark times, can be walked in his light. And Jesus invites us to walk in his light. Isaiah 9-2 says, People walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of death, depression, discouragement, disillusioned, a great light has dawned. Arise, arise, shine, for your light has come and the glory of God rises upon you. God sent his son, the true light of the world, to smash through the darkness onto this planet. He took on human form. He suffered. He he was crucified. He died. He conquered death. He rose again. He ascended into heaven and now seated at God's right hand, interceding for you and me, giving us access to his Holy Spirit, who he's promised to us to be our ever-present advocate, helper and guide. Now, this King of Kings, this Lord of Lords is the light of the world and he invites us to make a decision to exchange our darkness today for his living light. Don't travel through 2021 in your own strength. Whether you're a Christian and you've been overwhelmed with this darkness right now, or whether you've never considered Jesus or Christianity, whoever you are, wherever you are, if you are experiencing darkness and you need this light, the light of Jesus Christ, to break into your will today, then let's pray. Dear Lord Jesus, we have heard today that you truly are God and that you declare that you are the light of the world, a light that cannot be extinguished. I ask you, Lord Jesus, in the the power of the Holy Spirit to break into my life and dispel the darkness. Forgive me for my trespasses against you and I make a decision today to surrender my life in a fresh way And to surrender my ways to you. And to ask you, Lord, to direct my paths. And to fill me with your peace and your presence. I thank you that as your people, we are a chosen race. A royal priesthood. A holy nation. A people for your own possession. And that you proclaim you have called us out of darkness. And into your marvellous light. 
and we thank you for that light. Today, Lord, we acknowledge that you truly are the light of the world.